Welcome to the Supernatural with Laura Maxwell on Eternal Radio. In these programs, we will hear the true supernatural accounts from those who try various spiritualities. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Hello again everyone, and I really have to to start this show with a sincere apology. Apparently some of you have not been able to hear the show very well, or at least you can hear the guests, but you don't always hear me very well. Uh, I really can't apologise enough, that must be so frustrating, and please do bear with me as uh, I attempt to iron out these problems and thanks so much for letting me know I really appreciate your feedback and if I don't get back to you I'm not ignoring you I'm just um, finding it hard to keep up with emails and things thank you so much for your feedback it's much appreciated and on to tonight's guest tonight we have Tim Thompson he is a former psychic and satanist he is now a, a speaker and a deliverance minister and an author and he's been on many radio shows and TV shows and one of his books will soon be made into a film. So I really want to go ahead now and say hello to Tim. Hello Tim, how are you? Really good, thank you for having me on your show. Well, thanks for agreeing and um, we've been discussing it for about a year now and um, it's great that uh, time has finally arrived to, to have you on the show and um, you know, first off, I want to thank you because a few years ago now you sent me two of your books, A Psychic Discovers Jesus and also Demons Exposed. And those two books are really, really great books. Um, you know, I remember years ago reading C.S. Lewis' Screw Tape Letters and that book, Demons Exposed, it's kind of like that one, but <laughs> much more in depth um, and really has a lot of insight into spiritual warfare so thanks again for sending me those books even though that was a few years ago now there's still the uh, two books I still recommend and I thank you for that thank you so much for the compliment I deeply appreciate that and you know, end of the program I would like you to, to list your website and obviously people will be able to get in touch with you if they want your help or advice on things of a spiritual nature and really Tim I, I want you to just dive right in and, and start to share your your testimony with us okay well thank you um, the best way to explain it is, is that I'll just start from the very beginning when I was only six years old uh, my brother who was a year older than me uh, we were both walking on a frozen lake and I fell through the ice my brother saved my life and then he fell through the ice and no one could save him well at his funeral the Catholic priest Lily said the good Lord needed your brother so he took him oh. that moment on mm -hmm. at only age six I Lily burned with hatred towards God and I hated God and everything about God well about three weeks after my brother's death I went into my closet put a blanket up to my chest and I laid in a pretend coffin and I was trying to communicate with my brother and the first two times nothing happened but mm -hmm. on the third time that I did this I literally heard a voice crystal clear mock God and literally tell me how evil God is mm. well this really intrigued me because I'm only six years old yeah I decided to open myself up to this voice and want to hear more. Mm -hmm. Me and that voice became friends, and probably at about, I kept doing, going into my pretend coffin, and about three or four years later, I didn't have to go into my pretend coffin anymore. This spirit thing would come and talk to me. Mm -hmm. Well, when I was about 13 or 14, it showed itself to me, and then it showed other like spirit beings to me, and I was really intrigued, and I wanted to know them more. 
And the whole time, they would mock God, but they started to mock Jesus Christ more and more around me. Mm -hmm. Well, I just assumed that this is the way it is, but these spirits would always tell me how much they love me and how much they value me, and they'd always let me know how much they care about me. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you, Tim, um, why do you think it was so easy for you as a child to open up this spiritual door? Were your parents involved in any occult things that you know of? Uh, no, no. But my grandfather was a very well-known mason. But as far as that, there's no explanation except that I literally did mock God openly and I had no problem mocking God as a child. Yeah, okay, yeah. As When I was about 15 years of age, these spirits literally said, can we come inside? And when I said yes, from that moment on, I was never the same. Mm -hmm. I started to develop a strong desire to want to know who uh, Anton LaVey was, who, and he's the one that wrote the Satanic Bible. I also had a strong desire to know more about Adolf Hitler. Mm -hmm. And I also wanted to know more about Charles Manson, who is a famous a serial killer out of California that had the Manson family. Uh -huh. Suddenly, I'm developing these lights for men that were literally monstrous. Yeah. That had but yet, I was thrilled wanting to get to know who they were. Mm -hmm. As time went on, I started to notice that I started to walk in a lot of hatred where when I was in my late teens, when most young men were either getting involved in mechanics or getting involved in woodworking or something like hunting or something of the nature, mm -hmm. I actually would just lay there in my bed and communicate with spirit beings. Mm -hmm. But I would talk, and this is the thing that I try to get people to understand. When, when paranormal shows have me come on, I didn't have like one or two paranormal experiences. I know they walked for over 20 years. Say that again, Tim. Yes, and instead of instead of me having one or two paranormal experiences, mm -hmm. I literally walked and talked with demons, which I thought were just spirits, for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. Where they became so much a part of my life that my spirit guide would actually bring people into my life. And I started, when I was getting into my late teens, I started to develop a very strong habit of alcohol. And by the time I was 19, I was already involved heavily in cocaine. Mm -hmm. And I developed a meth addiction. And through the process of all this, this spirit guide would bring people into my life just to have sex with, to where before I became a Christian, as a Satanist psychic, so many people were impressed off of me mm -hmm. that I had over 200 sexual partners. Mm -hmm. But what a lot of people did not understand is Satanists do not have sex with people because of the sex. They have sex with people because of the channeling of the spirit. Oh dear, yeah. When you, when you literally have sex with people, you're channeling your energy form into them, and then the two of you now can do incredible things in the spirit where, I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. When I was 20 years old, I was able to lay my hands on a car, and I was able to car, cause cars to have major accidents. Mm -hmm. I could also speak over somebody's life and when I was and as I'm speaking all these curses I began to watch how people's lives were being destroyed because of the things I was saying over their life mm -hmm. so this uh, this uh, bond that, that you would develop through sexual acts would this be what some people might uh, term as soul ties or something of that nature that it, it gave you and this person a kind of a s connection there that was supernatural? That is exactly what it is. It's an ungodly soul tie. Mm -hmm. 
and see, the thing is, and now some people do not realize that you can have an ungodly soul tie by looking at a poster or looking at a, per a picture of somebody and then literally having a sexual contact with that picture through what you're doing to yourself. Mm -hmm. and, I'll, and I'll give you an example of that. One of the most damaging things that has affected me spiritually when I was young is a woman was killed in a car accident and I was 14 or 15 and I was so attracted to her that my spirit guide told me to masturbate to the picture of her even though her picture was showed up in the obituaries in the newspaper. Wow. So oh, I, I mean, if, if a spirit guide tells you to do something like that, it just shows you how uh, powerfully evil such a thing is. They're, they're so wicked and mm -hmm. so evil that they have no morals, no ethics, no values. They have no sensitivity at all to them. Mm -hmm. They're 100% to the extreme wicked and cruel. Mm -hmm. so, when I, so what I did is, is that this picture of this woman is in the newspaper, showed she was killed in a car accident, but when my spirit guide said masturbate to her picture, it changed my whole life because what happened is, is because I had an ungodly soul type by claiming that I was having sex with this dead woman, yeah. I literally was inviting all her familiar spirits that were around her to come inside of me. Mm. That's awful. Mm -hmm. Here I am, my my gift of, of being a psychic was just growing enormously, where I was able to tell people what their social security number was, I could tell people what their credit card number was, I could tell them where their jewelry that they were wearing, where it came from. Just by holding anything in the palm of my right hand, I was able to tell people what they, what was going on or where they got this or that. By holding anything in the palm of my hand through familiar spirits is what I was contacting through to read other people's lives. Mm -hmm. Well, here I am. My gift is growing. I, a lot of people are noticing that I'm getting so much better and stronger at my gift of telling people what's going on or where something came from. But in the whole time, a lot of people do not realize I was actually becoming more and more insane. Mm -hmm. And yes, you did hear me correctly. The more my gift to serve the enemy was becoming greater, the more I was becoming insane because when my gift got to the point to where I was able to start telling people I say for instance if they gave me their wedding rings and I was able to tell them where they bought them in mm -hmm. or who gave them to who what was happening is I was becoming more suicidal and homicidal mm. See, to make a long story short I've actually been in seven different mental institutions and I was in six different rehabilitation centers because of my cocaine, my meth, my alcohol habit, but then also the reason I was in seven different mental wards is because I've attempted suicide five times, but also I could go into a grocery store and immediately a, a spirit would start talking to me Yeah. things about other people, Yeah. but here I am in a grocery store trying to buy, like say for instance, a dozen eggs Mm -hmm. And there's a person only five feet away from me, and the spirit is automatically telling me all about this person, and I'm communicating back and forth. Well, that's called insanity. Yeah, and really your life's not your own anymore because you can't even do normal things. Spirit's talking to you all the time. You know, it's like a radio going on constantly in your head. And my mother went through the same when she was training to be a medium. So many people do, so... Yeah, and a lot of people in society don't realise that these so-called gifts, um, you can actually drive people crazy. But mediums don't talk about that because it's not a very good advert, of course. But I do understand what you're saying. Right, Laura, that's what was happening to me because mm -hmm. it got to the point where I was such a slave sexually that I, like I was telling, when I was speaking... At one conference, I was letting people know my first two sexual experiences in life, both times, were with 
uh, demons. And mm. the reason why is because as my gift started to develop, mm -hmm. I became a sexual slave where these spirits, when they came inside of me, if they told me that I need to wake up and do something with another person or do something to myself, mm -hmm. they wouldn't let me go back to sleep until they were satisfied. Yeah. And so many times I went without food, I went without uh, just a whole bunch of things because I was a slave to these demonic powers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as time went on, I started to develop uh, phobias, paranoia, and one of one of the times I was when I was sitting down with a psychologist and he was explaining how I've got schizophrenia mm -hmm. and I've got multiple personalities. What the psychologist did not see, but I saw perfectly clear, mm -hmm. that one spirit was running out of me frontwards and then another spirit was running into my back through the other way. Mm -hmm. Spirits were actually tag teaming me and yet I saw the whole thing because God has allowed me to see demons ever since I was little but the psychologist literally claimed I had all these problems and yet I knew for a fact that I didn't have any of the problems that they claimed mm -hmm. but I something was wrong because I was able to communicate with spirits on a regular basis. Yeah. Well, then as time went on, I started to develop more and more a desire to play with the Ouija board. And then all of a sudden I started to have a fantasy about wanting to kill people. And it was just on a regular basis. But then when I just got done with my third overdose, from uh, meth and cocaine, I literally was diagnosed with liver problems and heart problems and kidney problems, and I knew that my body was breaking down, mm -hmm. but I didn't know what to do, and so, like I said, I attempted, I just got done attempting my fifth suicide attempt, and I just finally said, that's it, there's no hope to my life. I was miserable, I was depressed, I had money, and I had all the sex I wanted, but I was so empty, I did not see any point for living anymore. Mm -hmm. well, on December the 13th, 1989, I got down on my knees. Now, you got to remember, I didn't know anything about Jesus because when I tried to reach out to a pastor, one pastor told me I should commit suicide, and then 15 months, 15 months later, I met another pastor, and he said, because of all the evil I've been into, I'll never mount to anything the rest of my life. A, a, so, a pastor actually suggested you should commit suicide. Yes. That's just horrific. Oh, it is. It's sad. It's mm -hmm. really sad. So mm -hmm. I just knew that my life was over. That I there was nobody that was cheering me on. Nobody had any hope that I would ever amount to anything because Laura. In every single way, I was a 100% loser. I just was. I, I could not hold down a job. Mm -hmm. I was in and out of mental wards. I was on medications. I had a severe drug and alcohol habit. And I had so many sexual partners. And I had no morals, no ethics. And nobody saw and evaluated me. So a lot of people that knew me, like family members and relatives, and friends just assumed that I was going to eventually take my life. Mm. But on the 13th, 1989, I got down on my knees. I just said, God, is it, show me, is there any sort of happiness in life? If there is, show it to me now or let me just die. Mm. Well, what I'm about to say is the most exciting thing I could ever tell anybody. But Jesus Christ came through my ceiling. Mm. He embraced me, he gave me a huge hug, and he said, I find value in you, and I love you. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. <gasps> Christ said, you will do great and mighty things for my kingdom. Mm -hmm. Well, the next day, I woke up in my bed. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how I got in my bed. I just knew I woke up. I knew I was set free, though. 
So I called a social worker that uh, knew me really well, mm -hmm. and the social worker said, Tim, you're kind of crazy, but I'm willing to listen to what you have to say. And I said, listen, mm -hmm. I'm not crazy anymore. I had an actual life encounter with Jesus Christ. He gave me a mental exam, and they found out for the very first time in over 11 years, my brain waves were normal, and that my mind was actually normal. Uh -huh. They were so marveled off of this that what he did is he called up the hospital and requested that I get blood test done to find out what's going on with my liver and kidneys and heart and see if there was any change in them. The hospital did two sets, different sets of blood tests on me because they found out that my whole body was healed. <gasps> no one could explain this, but over 200 pages of documentation proved that for no explanation except what Jesus Christ did, my body and my mind were completely healed according to what I said in a matter of a split second. Well, that's wonderful. Hallelujah. Think. <gasps> and so what I did is I said I was after I was set free. free mm -hmm. I thought the whole world, Laura, would want to hear about my testimony. And I and I went to churches and I told them about what I what, what happened. Mm -hmm. Well, to find out. Everybody was terrified of knowing that here I am, a former Satanist. And everybody was scared to death of my testimony. Mm -hmm. It was nothing for me to see a demon or turn a glass upside down or for doors to be slammed shut or for windows to be open. That was nothing. I, I, I literally went through 20 years with thousands and thousands of paranormal experiences. So as I'm explaining this, my encounter with Jesus Christ, people became very critical. Well, I didn't know what to do, but I knew I had to keep my relationship with Jesus Christ going. Mm -hmm. I did not call the church, so what I decided to do is to really study my Bible. Mm -hmm. I study the Bible, I found out that there's a, there's a person out there called the Holy Spirit. And when I started a love affair, a relationship with him, and he literally started to teach me things, I was just marveled. Well... After serving the Lord for about 11 years, going through the desert, pretty much working uh, in, on heavy equipment and working in warehouses, the Spirit of God told me to go to Oklahoma. Can I, so I can I interrupt for a second, Tim? Uh, do you feel because I, I often I often hear this from people like like yourself or, or myself that have came out of new age or the old cult that oftentimes um as baby christians we can be rejected from most churches that we know through through their fears um and it can be a hard hard time hard desert experience for us but that actually god uses it to draw us much much closer to him and to not rely on people as much and just because you said there you you um began a love affair with jesus was that because of of, of rejection from churches do you think oh definitely yes mm -hmm. yeah because um because i i at times i got really lonely because i didn't have anybody to tell them what i was learning in the bible mm -hmm. but yet the more I was slowly put in a situation where my loneliness was growing, mm -hmm. the more I started to turn to Christ. Yes. Um, what, yep. what I was going to say though, Lauren, mm -hmm. is, is that I was, the, the Spirit of God said, I want you to move halfway across the United States, so I did. Mm -hmm. And that's when I met a professor from Oral Roberts University, and see, and I, I did not ever go to college, I have no biblical training. So, but I became friends with a professor from a Christian college, mm -hmm. a Christian university. Mm -hmm. And one day he said, have you ever thought about writing out your testimony? And I, and I told him I did. Well, we handed it over to a publisher, and the publisher loved the book so much that they published it without fixing the grammar errors. Wow. Well, it was really incredible. Mm -hmm. Because I was getting ready to say, you know, we need to pull the book off the shelf. But the publisher let me know the book was selling 
<laughs> even though it had grammar errors. And that name of that book is The Psychic Discovers Jesus. Yeah. And that book is a large portion of my personal testimony of just how wonderful and awesome Jesus Christ is. Mm -hmm. One thing I have learned, Laura, is that if a person is claiming to be a Christian and they're claiming to walk with Jesus Christ, the most important thing a person can do to live in victory and to, and to walk in the authority of Jesus Christ and to walk in the compassion and the love of Jesus Christ, and that is to always remember to praise Jesus Christ, to honor Jesus Christ, to worship Jesus Christ, and exalt Jesus Christ daily. If you can make a point to let Jesus Christ be at the center of your life, at the, on the throne room of your of your life, I personally have learned that when you surrender all in Jesus Christ, you will be the Sorry, Tim, can you repeat that, please? Oh, yes, yes. What I was going to say is that I have, as a Christian, no one ever told me this. Mm -hmm. I would struggle with spiritual warfare, and, and I would struggle with a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. And as I was going out being an evangelist and teaching in different seminars and conferences, one day, the Spirit of God showed me how to walk in a greater anointing, in a greater power, in a greater authority, and but also in a greater love, in a compassion. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, what do I need you to do? And the Holy Spirit said, in all things, make sure that you praise God honor, worship, and exalt Jesus Christ daily. Mm -hmm. And Laura, I did not realize it, but when you make Jesus Christ really the center of your life, where you surrender all, where He really is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords daily in your life, mm -hmm. you will find yourself walking in a whole new level of not only excitement, but you will walk in a whole new level of power and authority because it's been 22 years now that I've been teaching, preaching, and doing deliverance. And constantly people ask me, aren't you worried about how many people are casting spells on you or speaking curses on you or coming against you? Mm -hmm. And I said, no, because... When you really start to understand that Jesus Christ's name is above every name, it will change your whole life. Because I tell people, I say, listen, depression's got a name. Anxiety's got a name. Fear's got a name. Doubt, lack, poverty, these are all names. But when you truly get it in your spirit that Jesus Christ's name is above every name, you will watch right before your own eyes change being broken, deliverance is taking place, demonic powers being shattered, and strongholds being crushed. Amen. I understand that, Tim, and, and you know, I've heard that from so many, so many people, so many wise, experienced Christians who, who will say, you know, sometimes Christians just aren't getting the breakthroughs in their personal life, or they're not getting the victories in the spiritual warfare that, that they're doing for others um, simply because they're not fully walking with Jesus as much as they could be so uh, I think the analogy is you know you, you're, you've, you've plugged yourself into the power source of Jesus Christ but the wires are hanging out you're not fully plugged into him so if you're not fully plugged in you know you won't see that victory um, Maybe a kind of not very good analogy, but yeah, I, I totally see that. And, and when people really are following Jesus with all their heart, as you say, th there's peace, there's joy, there's all the, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And um, yeah, it's not his fault when our lives are messed up. It's just because we, we need to be following more and falling more and more in love with him um, to see the victories in our lives. 
Well, it, it's really quite incredible because I've written seven books, and in the seven books, more and more as time has gone on, where I'm, I'm explaining to more and more people, my whole life used to be focused on spiritual warfare and deliverance and something setting people free but I have learned that the more my focus is just on Jesus Christ honoring him worshiping him exalting him and glorifying his name mm -hmm. the more and more I have seen my ministry slowly explode but the more and more I have seen so many results of people being set free just by coming into my conferences because it was really kind of funny. I have been putting on conferences in the last two years to where people are being set free just by coming to the conference. Mm -hmm. Nobody laying their hands on people. They were just being set free in their seats. Mm -hmm. Where so many years I would put on conferences and people would always have to come forward to be set free. Where in the last two years, so many people have been set free just because they're walking through the door and they're hearing this message about Jesus Christ's name is above, above every name. Mm -hmm. Because when you, when you start thinking about it and you start listing all the different problems and all the different mental illnesses and sicknesses and diseases, and you start realizing Jesus Christ's name is above every name, you start realizing that chains are being broken demonic powers are coming crashing down and strongholds are breaking in half mm -hmm. yeah totally i totally agree with that and i think often um deliverance ministers can fall into that trap where they're so busy helping people that they can be ending up focusing a little too much on the demons rather than Jesus, whereas we know that if we're so focused on Jesus and so much in love with him and worshipping him so much, the whole focus is on Christ that in actual fact demons will flee in his presence because we are so focused on Jesus. Um, yeah, and, and like a whole room of people can be just worshipping Jesus, not talking about demons at all or anything, and yet they just get set free because the presence of Jesus is so strong when you worship him. Amen. Amen, yes. Yeah, because see, I, um, I have I've seen so many people that what they'll do is, is that they'll get into a deliverance ministry and then they'll get into spiritual warfare and then all of a sudden they, they forget. It isn't about them. It's not about their what they know. It's about the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Because unless his name is being exalted and glorified, what is the purpose to anything we do in life? Mm -hmm. And so that's why to me, it whenever I go anywhere or like I'm writing another book right now and, and like... Um, right now we're working working on getting my testimony put into an actual motion picture and then in, in the actual motion picture is we're hoping is going to be called a psychic discovers jesus it's going to be named right after the book because mm -hmm. the whole entire motion picture is being written in a format <laughs> from the book but what we're what i'm what we're whole believing for is we're believing for one million souls to be saved because so many people are getting into the paranormal. Yeah. So many people are watching, wanting to watch ghost hunter movies or ghost hunting shows. And so many people are literally seeking after all these demonic things, looking for answers because they don't realize the Word of God has all the answers but the thing is that you've got to take the time to look for the answers. Mm -hmm. Well, that, it's so that, yeah, it's, it's, it's too easy. It's too easy for people to get the answers other ways, Ouija board or whatever. Uh, sitting down and reading the Bible is like, it takes an effort. So, yeah, I know what well, you're saying. Just, Laura, mm -hmm. I don't know how churches are there, but I find it so sad how many churches in the United States where they are so money focused that they have forgotten that Jesus Christ is the true king. Mm -hmm. That's 
so many people look it towards money for their answers. And yes, we do need money to pay our bills. But the, the, our main focus should be at all times, should be about Jesus Christ. Amen. Because I will like to I will like to say one thing though is that I have seen people get into uh, explaining things about spiritual warfare, and then all of a sudden they now they start thinking that they're better than other people, and now they start getting into pride, and then people have contacted me and saying, "Hey, how come?" so-and-so hasn't been on a talk show or how come so-and-so hasn't been on TV or radio programs and I'll say listen it's so sad because Jesus Christ if he's not going to be exalted and praised he will not bless a person's ministry I have seen this over a thousand times where one person's ministry will literally explode in growth but then another ministry literally will go nowhere and it'll stay there until the person finally understands it's not about them it's about Jesus Christ mm -hmm. yeah I because totally agree one thing I have learned is that when the Bible says that humility goes before honor but pride goes before a fall but I've also learned that God is looking for people who are willing to say it's about Jesus Christ because see Laura, if anybody goes to either one of my two websites, because I've got two of them, but one thing that my ministry stresses over and over again is being fat. And being fat means to be faithful, faithful to your spouse, faithful to a church, faithful to a Bible study, faithful to your kids, being accountable, being accountable to a church, to a pastor, to some people, being accountable to somebody. Mm -hmm. And then are you teachable? Mm -hmm. See, so many people I have met, they get into spiritual warfare, and then they'll and they'll end up being destroyed because they have not learned how to be faithful, accountable, and teachable. Mm -hmm. And and we all need each other, and no one ever comes to the place, you know, no matter how experienced they are as a, as a Christian, no one ever comes to the place where they can do this walk alone we, we all need each other we all need each other's honesty and you know i could maybe see things in someone that they don't see vice versa because we've all got our own blind spots we all make mistakes and we just need each other as you say to, to be accountable and to be honest with each other when we see things going uh, wrong to, to to help each other get sorted yes and that's just it is and and the sad thing is, is that too many people who get into spiritual warfare, one thing that I have seen and um, so many leaders have contacted me about is that so many people, they get into the spirit of competition. Mm. And what's really sad about that is, is that as a minister, we're called to save souls. We're, we're not called to get into competition with one another. But I find it so sad mm -hmm. how many people who are Christian authors who get into spiritual warfare will not advertise or promote another person's material because of because of the, the spirit of competition. Yeah, I don't like, I don't get that at all. That that perplexes me. You know, on my blog and um, my YouTube, I like to recommend other ministries and, and list other ministries because well we just all need each other and there's no one ministry can help everyone it's it's a team effort it's a joint effort and uh yeah i just i don't understand that when folks can't um share the load you know jesus wants us to share the load if if as a deliverance minister you try to do it all yourself uh you would you would get burned out for a start <laughs> you know I, on one of my websites, I've got a separate link that says other authors. And so what I do is I promote other Christian books. Mm -hmm. And I do that because for the simple fact is when people say, hey, is there other Christians where I can buy their books on Amazon? I want to promote other Christians' books. Mm -hmm. Especially if somebody is into warfare, spiritual warfare, 
I want to promote their books. I want people to get as much information they can on how to walk in the power of the authority and the, and the love and the compassion of Jesus Christ. To me, that is so important, but I also find it very sad how many Christian authors that I've talked to that have written books on spiritual warfare will not accept me or acknowledge me because of that spirit of competition. Mm. And that's why well, I'd like to share with you something that my ministry really keeps people in line to talk about, and that's in James chapter 3, verse 16. It says, where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every single, every, every evil thing are there. So which means that if you are self-seeking, a lot of Christians don't realize this, but when you are self-seeking, you are actually inviting in demonic spirits into your life. And it's so sad that so many Christians live in defeat because they do not understand that their life, their gifts, their skills are not about them, but they're about raising the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. See, I, I have two websites. One of them is ExposingTheDarkness.com, and it's, and it's just spelled out just like it sounds, ExposingTheDarkness.com, mm -hmm. or there's the other one, which is Pastor T-I-M Thompson, T-H-O-M-P-S-O-N, so PastorTimThompson.com or ExposingTheDarkness.com. Mm -hmm. Both websites have a lot of information to help people understand Jesus Christ has called us to walk in the authority the power the anointing the love and the compassion of him mm -hmm. because Jesus said you were called to do greater things than me but yet how many ministries are doing anything at all and we're called to serve people you know as you say if anyone has a gift or a ministry it's, it's not for them it's to serve people. Jesus was a servant and he laid down his life for us all. So, so what if any of us, you know, had a, a great ministry? So what? You know, when we die, we die. We're all forgotten about. It's all about Jesus and, and serving people with his love. Yes. And, and to me, that's why my heart is literally breaking when I see a when I see a ministry in competition with another ministry, because to me, we should be all working for the Great Commission, and that is to help save souls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's interesting because even the disciples, um, obviously they were with Jesus um, for years and with him all the time, and yet they even uh, were competitive at times and argued about who would sit with Jesus in heaven. So. Yeah, I guess it's one of these human traits that um, um, that we do need to take to the Lord and uh, crucify our, our sinful nature, basically. Right, yes, because, um, Laura, it was really funny. I've had people actually contact me and ask me, what book would you highly recommend I read of your books? And I tell people, actually, I would tell people most of the time, read the Holy Bible. Mm-hmm. Because I tell people it is better to read the Holy Bible than any of my books because I will not even come close to comparing to the Spirit of God of the Holy Bible. Exactly. But I tell people yeah. I am just a small instrument used by God to bring souls into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. So if I'm just a small instrument, go and seek first the kingdom of God. Let, the, let God direct your path. Amen. I, I totally agree. I totally agree with that. Uh, get, getting back to your, your testimony, Tim, um, you, you said you, you were at the stage where, um, I can't remember, you, you spoke about, um, you know, focused on warfare and then helping people seeing better results now that you're focused more, more on Jesus. Um, can can you tell us, you know, when you did come to to Jesus, 
did you throw out occult paraphernalia? Did you destroy um, I, things? I, I, when I had when I experienced Jesus Christ mm -hmm. in my encounter with Him, when Jesus literally set me free, I knew right then and there, Laura, that He really was who He said He was, and I was not at all going to walk away from that. Mm -hmm. Where, uh, like, when He set me free, I didn't drink, I didn't do drugs, I did not devil in anything with witchcraft or demonic powers again because when I learned what Jesus Christ really did for me mm -hmm. when I experienced that there was no greater force nor weapon I've ever experienced in my whole life because I literally have no doubt telling people I know for a fact I was going insane and I was going insane quickly mm -hmm. and twice I almost was almost committed to an insane, insane asylum because of how messed up I was getting. And so when I had my encounter with Jesus Christ, I knew that I knew that I knew he really was who he said he was. Mm -hmm. And so what I do is I pray for people that they would have a God encounter like I did. Mm -hmm. Because when Jesus Christ becomes something tangible to you, you'll see that all the pleasures of sin mean nothing when Jesus Christ becomes tangible to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, t I totally, I totally see what, what you're saying. It's, um, you know, and sometimes you, you hear people saying things like, you know, maybe if, if they were a, a drug addict before, they might say something like, when I met Jesus, he became so real to me that his love and his power, his presence was actually more powerful than, than any, you know, drug or any buzz that I had before. Um, you know, and it might sound a, a kind of cheap way of, of, of describing Jesus, but, but yeah, when you meet him and he's becoming so powerful to you, then other things, as the Bible says, that they lose... They lose their, their attraction, they lose their power. Some people do struggle, of course. Tim, you obviously had such a dramatic encounter with Jesus. You changed practically overnight. Some people still uh, struggle as Christians with, with issues. Would you say that for them, um, certainly a life of following Jesus and reading the Bible and worship is important, but would you say they that's when they need help, um, they need deliverance ministry? Uh, definitely, definitely, I would because um, mm -hmm. I I have met so many people that are that were severe sex addicts, just like me. Mm -hmm. Where if they went twenty four hours without sex, they would become suicidal. My goodness! And with those types of people, I do have to mm -hmm. do uh, a lot of warfare for mm -hmm. because they don't realize. They're actually under the control or under the spell of a very powerful demonic spirit. Uh huh. Uh huh. So for some Christians, you know, some Christians do need uh, that help, that deliverance help. And as we know in, in the Bible, Jesus and the disciples cast out demons, so it's still required today. And um, if a Christian is struggling, it's not that Jesus doesn't want to help, and it's not that he's not powerful. But they may just need a fellow Christian to cast some demons out, to cut some curses. Um, and that's why I'm so glad um, to promote ministries such as yours, Tim. Because, um, yeah, people can get suicidal and their lives can be ruined. So it's it's just wonderful that, that your ministry... And I really look forward to this film and I hope, God willing, um, that uh, it, it, does, it does happen in, in God's timing. Well, Laura, like I said, I just really want to thank you so much again for having me on your show. Because to me, I my with the way my schedule has been so booked up for so many months, and then I know that you've been busy, and then my schedule got busy again. So I just really want to thank you so much for your patience of just hanging in there with me until I could finally get on your show. 
Well, I thank you for your patience for waiting because, as you know, um, I don't do many shows. I don't have many guests on and I have quite a lot of guests who do wait. Some even wait up to a year and uh, uh, it just um, delights me when, when people have that patience and, and finally get on the show. Um, and I'm, I'm so grateful to you for joining us. And uh, Tim, could you could you please... Tell us uh, your websites again for people if they want to get in touch with you. Um, in fact, before before we do that, we've still got a little time. Can you advise, if there's anyone listening who is interested in the paranormal, ghost hunting, um, psychic abilities and so on, what would you advise them? I would tell them to be highly awarded. And I would tell them that they are literally involving something that is extremely dangerous. Because I had a I had a woman that contacted me. She had a good career. Her life was going great. She was married happily. She was doing just meditation. Mm-hmm. And one day, when she was doing a meditation, she saw a black shadow walking across her living room floor. And she contacted her group leader. She contacted some friends. They all said, hey, just don't do meditation for a while. Take a break from it because it's probably just nothing. And when you know it, six months later, her whole life was destroyed. She started to go insane. She started to see things. Mm -hmm. Uh, Her husband left her. Her child was uh, getting sick all the time. Her, their their finances were under severe attack, but what it was is that when you uh, on my website exposingthedarkness.com, I have a page on there, and on that page it says opening portals. Mm-hmm. Portal is a way for a demon or demons to have a direct contact with a human being, where they don't have to go through a, any other doorway. As soon as that door is open, that human being has direct contact with demons. When you allow demons to have direct contact with you, it can literally change your whole life so fast, immediately, that I have seen actually, and this was really sad to say, but there was a person that had sex with another person, and because this person was heavy into witchcraft, Mm -hmm. he went ahead and had sex with with this woman who was heavy into demonic powers and within twenty of uh, within twenty four hours the demons in her that now are in him because the two of them had sex mm-hmm. convinced him to take his life and he, he committed suicide. Oh that's awful. I've heard of that before. Yeah I've and heard people, of that before. Uh, once again that a lot of times when a person is heavy into the occult or Satanism or voodoo Black magic, white magic, the only reason they're having sex with people or with a person is to channel the energies of demonic powers from one person to the other, and that's the problem, because I had another friend of mine, and he was an actual friend, and we had to do a deliverance on him, but when he had sex with another person, a woman, within 24 hours, he started to have unnatural desires towards other men Mm -hmm. and he never thought of any any at all having having desires towards men but yet after sleeping with this woman he started having sexual desires towards men and we had to break that demonic power Mm -hmm. off of him yeah come to find out he would actually sleep with men and women on a regular basis we're just running out of time now tim um so yeah and i'd like to also say you know echo what you said even if it's only meditation or only yoga people can report they start seeing spirits once once they do this it's not surprising because many people who teach meditation and who teach yoga will admit that such practices do open you to spirits so it's not rocket science basically tim um we've got one minute left so People can look at your websites, the main one, exposingthedarkness.com, 
And could you please pray for our listeners now? Yes, uh, Laura, I'm glad I do that. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for the listeners. I thank you, Lord of God, for what you're doing in Laura's life. And I thank you, Lord of God, for this, for this radio program. Heavenly Father, I just pray right now in Jesus Christ's name that, Lord the God, that you would show people, show people what Philippians 2 9 talks about, about name being above every name. Lord that God, so many people are seeking answers and seeking wisdom and they're seeking knowledge, but the thing is, they're all seeking in the wrong places. And I pray, Lord that God, that Jesus Christ's name would be exalted, glorified, honored, and worshiped and praised daily. To our Lord, that God, I pray Jesus. that people would hear the name of Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ would draw these people unto Himself. And I pray, Lord, that God, that in every single thing that my ministry or Laura's ministry or other ministries are doing, I pray, Lord, that God, that Jesus Christ's name would be glorified and honored and worshipped and praised. Heavenly Father, I just ask right now that you would just spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, financially bless and protect. The listeners of this radio program protect Laura and protect me and my family. And I pray, Lord, that God, that you would just continue to shatter all the demonic powers, to sever demonic powers. And I pray, Lord, that God, that strongholds would be broken and that people would be set free in Jesus Christ's holy name through the blood, through the name of Jesus Christ, and through the anointing power of the Holy Spirit. In Christ Jesus we pray. May his name be forever glorified. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Tim. And, and dear listeners, please do pray for Tim and myself and, and other ministries at this time of year, September, October, as we uh, prepare in the lead up to Halloween. Many of us do get inundated at this time of year, um, you know, um, to, to do talks and, and conferences and the like. And we so appreciate every one of your prayers. Thank you so much, Tim. God bless you. Laura, thank you again. I deeply appreciate being on your show. I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much and goodbye for now. Goodbye. The preceding program was made possible by kind donations from the listeners to Eternal Radio, for which we are very grateful. It takes a great deal of time and resources to prepare, produce, record, and broadcast our programs to listeners in over 60 countries around the world. Our potential audience is much larger, and Eternal Radio can now be heard all around the world, online, on tablet, on smartphone, and on TV. If you would like to help us continue broadcasting sounds to energize your faith, together with the message of God's love for all mankind around the world, please prayerfully consider making a donation. From your mobile phone, simply text ELCM02, followed by your donation preference of £3, £5 or £10 to 70070. Thank you for listening.